All right, guys, so in this class, we were talking about uh, geometric blends. And for me, they kind of parlay pretty well on the field diagrams we looked at the week prior. Um, so in this video, I'm just going to talk you through the three systems we have here. The first one is curve-to-curve -curve blends, which is 2D to 2D. Um, the next will be surface-to-surface -surface blends, which is 3D to 3D. And then the last one is mesh blends, which are again 3D, but uh, as we talked about in class, meshes actually contain more information than just NURB surfaces. Um, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is just draw two curves. Um, here's the first one. There's the second one. So with these ones, um, I can bring in my curves by right-clicking and setting one curve. Right-click, set one curve. Um, and what we're using here is the rebuild curve. So uh, these two curves that I have have different amounts of control points and we have to get them on an equal footing. So by using rebuild curve, we plug our curves in and then I can say that I want them to have four control points. So if I preview these right now, um, and I'm zoom in, you can see that my rebuilt curves are you know, not at all close to what I previously had. And if I actually by right-clicking my slider, I can change its values and say its max values is 100. And as I add more, uh, oh, you know what? I just noticed that I was actually on degree of curvature, which is three is fine. The number of control points is what I want to increase here. Um, so 19, I'm pretty close, and obviously I can get much closer with say 53. We have all. Uh, a very close approximation of that curve. The next thing I do uh, is to kind of, everything's done in parallel. So I'm dividing both of these new curves. Um, I'm going to hide my rhino curves. So these two curves here, I divide up um, with the divide curve. So if I say divide, I'm using divide curve. I'll preview that. You see I have a series of points. These are nine points. So I can do more. Um, then I connect these two points together with a line. This is a line, and we're using this one here. It's a two-point line. So that gets us uh, our intermediate kind of scaffolding. And we use those lines, again, with another uh, curve divide to get intermediate points. Um, this was the little trick that we talked about. Uh, if we were to just go ahead and use the interpolate curves here at the end, and plug in what we currently have, we would just get lines that run um, along the lines we've already created. If I turn on my points here, if I type point list, that's this command here, I can see that I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all the way up. I can reduce the size a little bit of that text. So, you know, 16 through something, there's a whole bunch of numbers in that. We're just getting the same sets. Using a path mapper, it's kind of confusing, but I can plug my points in, right click my path mapper and create a null mapping. What that does is tells me, you know, how the data is working right now. By double clicking it, I can manipulate that data. So right now I have, uh, let's call it a city, a street, no, a state, a city, a street, and if I add parentheses i parentheses, I have a house number. So we say the i is actually this zero on this street. On the other side, basically you want it to look the same, but we're going to swap the street with the house number. It's the best analogy I have. Basically, we're just kind of moving this data back and forth. Now, if I preview this in my points, you can see all my 13s are on a street, all my 12s, so and so, all the way up. And when I build my lines off of this, I get the inter intermediate curves. So I'm going to unpreview this. And for all this stuff, I'll go ahead and preview off, preview off this. Now you can see I have blending curves. And if I edit anything, if I just move this curve away, it'll blend. If I hit F10, ah, type points on, I can manipulate this point and change all the blends in between. That's uh, 2D. For the next one, I'm going to show surfaces. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make a plane. It could be any surface. I'm just using a plane. And right now I'm going to type rebuild. And this will give me more subdivisions of the surface. I'll say OK. Um, again, typing points on. I can come in and manipulate these points. 
I'm going to first just make a copy. Copy vertical and make a second plane up in space. And this is the one I'm going to edit. So points on. And I'll just do something really simple to show you. Take all this stuff. I'm using the gumball here, um, which is just a pretty quick way to manipulate the service, surface. All right. So for this next example, this is the definition we're using. It's very, very similar. I'm going to bring in both of my surfaces, this one and this one. And I'm using the surface divide. Surface, surf, divide surface, that's this component here. And I'm dividing them equally in the U and the V 15 times. So that puts all those green points on. I use a line just like we used before, a line two point. Um, using the line two point, I get my intermediate lines. Uh, and then I use this point on curve. That's this component here. Using point on curve, I'm able to move a point. So let me preview this. There's my 50%, 55%. And I can move this up and down to kind of get a different grouping of points along these lines. So go ahead and hide that stuff. The last thing I need to do is go uh, surface from points. Surface from points here. So I plug my points into it. Um, and right now these have a hierarchy, so by right-clicking the points, I can flatten them. We, we eliminate all the hierarchy. There's just a generic set of points. The next thing I need to do is to supply how many points there are in the U direction. This component only works with rectangular-based grids. So what I'm doing is saying, well, I've divided, divided it 15 times, but really there are 16 points. So I use a math component by just typing plus one. I get an addition component. I plug my divisions, 15, into A. It adds plus one with the B. And I plug that in to my U. And by doing that, I can preview this. And I have my new surface. Hide all that stuff. So now I can move this surface. And it goes from flat to something deformed. And if I want, you know, I could set this here and bake. Bake my new surface. Say OK, and then move it up a little bit more and bake this surface. OK, move it up even more and bake that surface. And so then here in Rhino, let's go to rendered view and look at it. I would have kind of this, uh, it almost looks like an animation, something falling. But that's how you do surfaces. Take all this stuff and go ahead and delete it. Our final example is meshes. And meshes work a little bit differently. It's just a single source we're feeding into it. And I think the easiest way to do this is with um, the command mesh box. Um, and I can go ahead and just draw this. And let's go to shaded view. Uh, when you type mesh box, you can see I have three X faces, three Y faces, two and two. This is very simple. If I wanted to change this to five, five by five, when I drew the next box here, I'd have a lot more uh, subdivisions. So if I come in, uh, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to make a copy of this mesh box and move it down a ways. Um, if I type points on, the thing to remember is that this point is actually three points. It's the point ending this corner, this surface's corner, and this surface's corner. If I click that, you can see this here. So if I just grab um, the top surface corner and I pull it up, you can see it's a hollow box inside. We don't want that. So anytime I select any vertices to edit, I need to make sure that I'm selecting um, all of them. And it's a little tricky to do sometimes, but it takes a little getting used to, and then you should be able to have that kind of control. So let's see if uh, I can use the gumball and just do some simple editing. Rotate it this way and pull this face out. If I grab a series of points there, I'm going to slide those up. I can actually use the scale and, and change the scale of them. Um, Let's see if I can get the, the Y. Next. I'm just trying to make some type of deformation that we can see the change. Uh, I'm going to take all those points and I'll really narrow it down. You can see that there are a couple, if I go too far, the surfaces get messed up. Um, so you have to be careful not to turn your surfaces inside out. It will still work, but uh, just one thing to keep in mind. Grab this stuff, rotate it, 
move it up, move it over. So now we have something that's very much different than the original box. All I have to do, um, and actually let's do this. If I copy this other, the same box, and we move this down, I'm, I'm going to test this. Say set multiple meshes in Grasshopper, right click, multiple meshes, one, two, and three. This deconstructs the mesh. Um, it breaks it into a series of vertices and a series of faces. By flipping the organization of the vertices, we're able to make polylines. And those lines fall from one vertice to its deformed vertice back to its normal vertice. And then we're using this section here to evaluate how often those are divided up. And we're using the command uh, evaluate curve, eval, evaluate curve here. And by feeding this uh, math into it, we don't need this one, this will actually divide it up into 19 even segments. So preview that. Uh, and you can see there's a whole bunch. I'm going to turn off my polylines. There's all the transformations of uh, the mesh. We then take those points, we flip them back so they're matching the prior orientation, and we use this command construct mesh, construct mesh here, to rebuild the mesh based off the previous faces with the new vertices. So if I go ahead and preview that and hide all this stuff, sorry, preview this one. I'm going to bake my new meshes onto a layer, we'll group them. We'll say OK. I'll close the last upper just to show you. This was my original mesh. I'll delete it for just to show the, the continuity. Um, and now that I have this, it's something that I can work with. Like It's just geometry in Rhino. So if I took all of this stuff and said scale 1D, I could really uh, tighten them up. Let's say that's, you know, like we want, we want to make something that's more of like a, a rib structure. So we can reduce their size, and I can also say that like I want all of these ones. Let's see, take all of that, and let's see, bend, bend, and the start of the spine. We're going to go from here to here, and I can take them and kind of shift them. If I wanted to, I could take all this and do a cage edit, a bounding box, and I could deform this stuff further by using cage edit there so you can see that you know it was a pretty quick transformation to make something that that is a continuous gradient but I don't take the output from Rhino from Grasshopper sorry um, is kind of gospel it's something that I can still work with if this is a group right now so I'm gonna explode it um, sorry ungroup it and now these are independent faces because I exploded it. But I can come in and just say, well, I want to delete that. Um, I'm going to scale 1D, this mesh, and, and say, well, really, I want this one to be much, much bigger. Whatever transformations I need to make to have it work architecturally with my scheme, I can do. Um, the final thing to know is that I can take a series of these and say mesh to NURB, and they'll convert. So here I'm going to go ahead and just delete. And these are my NURB surfaces that represent um, my mesh. And with, what's nice about NURB surfaces is that I can actually use Make2D. Um, let's see that stuff. Make2D. Great. And then on my top view, I actually have that 2D line work. And I could come in if I wanted to and edit some of this stuff. Um, but that's it. That's how you use those examples. The final thing we covered in class was uh, sectioning tools. Uh, what we did there was take all of our masses, these ones here, so we create an array. Um, it's best to do this in kind of plan view. And I controlled the direction of my array. Right now I want it to be in the Y, so they go this way. I'm going to say that I want uh, 50 cuts, and I'm going to say that they're going to be 2 inches apart, which is, uh, I'm not even at a scale here, so we'll say 2 feet apart. Now you can see that you know that's the the grouping it will cut. I'll say that I'm going to go five feet apart just to see if we can cover everything. So here, by just clicking, um, it will cut through each of these pieces of geometry and give us a section, and they they maintain a hierarchy. Um, and then I can come over and uh, I'm going to go on this layer, sorry, layer three, and I'm going to call this my cut layer. So going back to section tools, I'm going to create a 2D nest layout. 
I'm going to click my list of all my sections and say select all of my sections I just took. Say OK. Right now they want to be arranged horizontally. I prefer to arrange them vertically. Makes the most sense for me. Clear spacing methods is OK. And spacing value I'm going to say 0.25. So it's going to give you a clear space. Um, I'm asking it to just give me 25% of the clear space. So by clicking it lays out all the sections. You can see some of them are pretty close but there's still little gaps in between. Um, there's a text uh, dot here that we're going to get to in a second. What I want to do is type SEL dot. That will select all of my text dots and I want to convert dots. This text will, or the, this dot isn't something that we can laser cut. By saying convert dot, we'll convert it to um, text. And to do that, we're going to delete our input, I'll say yes, and change our output to be text. Um, the text height is 1, uh, that's fine. Align bottom left, that's fine. We'll just take that. And now we have text here. If we come over to the properties here, I want to change my text. I don't want Arial. Um, a lot of systems, I hope I do right now, have uh, proxy, which is a single line text. I don't know that I actually have it installed on my system right now. You want a single line text. Um, right now, if you laser cut this, it would trace the outside. It would take a long time and you don't really need it to do that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any other ones here. I can move... I, I'm just going to be guessing. Um, proxy is a good one to use. Let's see. No. Alright, we'll leave it like that. I'm going to move my text into uh, my cut. The next thing I'm going to do is to right click my layer cut and say duplicate layer and objects. This will now be my score layer. Um, by right clicking score I say select objects and I'm just going to move them. I know that the bottom of this cut is the same as the bottom of that cut. So if I move this down it'll match up bottom to bottom. Say OK and I'm going to change my score color to be something different so we can see it. Now when I laser cut this will cut out but I'll also etch this score line on it so I know that my next piece will align to that score and help me kind of keep things organized as I build this kind of crazy model. Um, you can see that my, my score is off and uh, it, if this is something that if I would have spaced it out a little better it would have been much more useful but I kept it close for now. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions um, or have any struggles with it go ahead and email me. Um, do my best to get back to you. Thanks.